Hi and thanks for joining me on part 2 of my carburetor basics and tuning video. In part 1 I dismantle this carb and show you how each bit works and then put it back together. If you are unsure how a carburetor works please watch part 1 as it will make this part 2 a little easier to understand. I'd like to start by sharing with you a few common problems that I think should be taken care of before starting any carb tuning. Some might be quite obvious, but are sometimes overlooked. Point number one, I suggest you start any tuning with a fresh clean air filter. I think it's pointless doing any tuning if you're just going to suck dirty air back into the clean carb. Point number two, I suggest using a clean or a brand new spark plug. I found that the 9 works best for me in my riding conditions on the busy roads of Sydney, Australia. Point number three, Ensure you're using a suitable two-stroke oil and continue to use it. I'm using Motul 710. My top end rebuild series shows this. Point number four, make sure your petrol is fresh. Petrol does go stale over time. Also make note of what octane you've decided to use and continue to use it. Point number five and a small point, ensure that the choke cable moves freely and is not stuck in the carb. And the sixth and final point, ensure there are no vacuum air leaks. You'll be wasting your time if you're trying to tune a carb when you have unmetered air finding its way into the engine, particularly around the seals and the rubber manifold. A common problem is that over time the rubber manifold can get hard and does not seal tightly on the engine or the carb or it starts to crack. I recently replaced mine because as you can see here it started to happen. A method I use when checking for air leaks is to warm the bike up to full operating temperature then carefully spray carb cleaner around this area of the engine while it's idling. The RPM will fluctuate if carb cleaner is sucked into the engine through these seals, telling you that unmetered air could be also leaking in. Before we go outside to start tuning, I want to show you this white paper tape with various markings. It shows the three main throttle positions. P is for pilot jet, N is for needle, and M is for main jet. This gives me an indication of what carb jet is being used regardless of the RPM and how fast I may be traveling. This will help me identify which part of the carb needs to be adjusted during the tuning phase. Between this quarter mark tells me that the pilot jet is operating. It's important to note that the pilot jet is constantly working while the engine is running. It's the smallest jet in the carb. It's also largely responsible for starting the bike, a snappy throttle response in the low RPM, and the smooth strong idle. You can slightly alter the characteristics of this jet by adjusting this fuel screw. If the pilot circuit is lean and we have too much air entering the engine, then we could experience a runaway idle or weak power. If the pilot circuit is too rich, then it may be hard to start the bike, we have a slow lurching throttle response, and may not be responsive. This will be the first circuit I'll be adjusting by turning the fuel screw and this idle screw when we go outside and start the bike. As I roll the throttle around to the middle position, it indicates that the needle circuit is now operating. If your bike is a road bike, you'll probably spend most of your time riding around here, as it's largely responsible for the mid-range power. If your needle circuit is too rich, you may feel a bogging, a stuttering, or excessive smoke. If the circuit is too lean, you may experience a fading in the power, or excessive heat, or a pinging sound coming from the engine. I have explained how this circuit works in part one of this video series. Lastly, in this position, the needle is raised to the point where it's no longer restricting the fuel and the main jet is in full flow. It's largely responsible for full power at wide open throttle. Symptoms of a rich or lean main jet can be similar to the symptoms of the needle jet. In this video, I'll be checking the correct size and operation of the main jet by doing what's known as a plug chop. That's enough in here. Let's move out to the road and start the bike.
could be it. I'm okay mate. Yeah, yeah, just changing spark plugs. All, right, All good, thank you. When I got back to the workbench to chop the spark plug, I had an unwanted surprise. As I unbox the plug, you will notice that the plug I recently tested and about to chop is actually an 8, not a 9. Throughout the history of tuning this bike and sampling all of these various plugs, I must have accidentally mixed the boxes whilst out on the road and put an 8 in a 9 box. I checked the spark plug that is currently in the bike and it's definitely a 9. So all prior tests of the pilot and needle circuit in this video are accurate. This is annoying, however I'm confident that the test results we see here, with all things considered, won't be too much different between an 8 or a 9. Here you can see the small carbon band around the porcelain base of the electrode. It's about 2 millimeters thick and a light chocolate brown color. I'm quite happy with this reading. I think that had I held it for another gear or another couple of seconds, I think the band may have darkened slightly and got a bit thicker. I'm also told that my two-stroke oil, the Motul 710, is not the best for plug chop readings as it has a clean burn. I hope this video was informative and may assist some of you with tuning your own two-stroke bikes. Please reach out in the comments if you have any questions and I'll do my best to answer promptly.